Hello, and welcome to 5 Minutes Postgres. My name is Lucas, and today we're going to talk about the new Postgres patch releases and the security bug that they fixed. We'll also talk about extension security in Postgres, as well as the public schema and the change in Postgres 15 to make it more secure. We'll start with this announcement for the new Postgres patch releases that came out last week. First of all, an important note that was mentioned here on the beginning of this announcement is that the Postgres 10 end of life is coming up. On November 10, which is roughly three months from now, if you're still running Postgres 10 in a production environment, you will actually be end of life as an out of support. And that means you should really start upgrading to newer Postgres versions now if you haven't already. This security vulnerability relates to an extension script being able to replace objects or affect objects that don't belong to the extension. This is a problem that has existed in Postgres for a while, but it was only discovered recently by Sven Glenn, who reported this to the Postgres project. It relates to an extension script calling create or replace or create if not exist commands. They can cause the extension to take ownership of an object that wasn't supposed to be owned by the extension. This will then potentially cause arbitrary code execution of attack control code. It requires a few prerequisites to be effective. You have somebody who has permission to create non-temporary objects in at least one schema. We'll come back to this, but usually this is a problem with the public schema. We'll also need an administrator to create or update an affected extension that has one of these commands. And then we'll also need to get somebody to actually use one of these objects targeted by these commands. It requires quite a few steps to be a problem, but it would be extra careful and make sure to update to this new patch release as fast as you can. So when Clem, who reported this bug to the Postgres project, also wrote a very useful tool called pgspot. Amongst other things, pgspot actually detects problematic extension scripts that have an issue like this. pgspot is something you could run on extensions that you write yourself or maybe extensions that you're considering to use in your own system. There is a very useful list of 17 different vulnerabilities that pgspot detects. Just to give you an example, the top vulnerability here is about unqualified operators. This is a typical Postgres schema security issue. Let's say you have a statement that does select and then it selects you know, from one column to another column and it uses the plus operator to combine these two. The plus operator ultimately calls a function. What may not be obvious here is that operators can also be schema qualified. If you control the search path, you're able to get somebody to actually execute an operator that's in a different schema that you would expect. Now, on the notion of schemas, I also want to point out PG hostile. You can use this to battle test your Postgres system against a common problem, where if you can create functions in the public schema, the public schema is in a search path, and then you can trick a super user to run code from public instead of PG catalog. Imagine a built-in function, let's say unless, for example, if you create an unless function that's slightly more specific than a PG catalog function, then Postgres would actually prefer to run that function instead of the built-in function. And so you could trick an administrative user into executing these functions under their account, but with code of your choice. PG hostile creates those functions that will then cause you to accidentally run the wrong code. This is something that you could do as part of a pen test. For example, you could use PG hostile to exercise if your code that it runs as an administrative user is subject to these problems. Postgres 15 actually has a very helpful change. A lot of what was reported here today is related to the fact that the public schema before Postgres 15 used to be writable by anybody who can connect to the database. You may not notice, but if you have public schema active, as you might have today on a standard Postgres installation, as long as somebody can connect to the database, they can just go ahead and create objects like a table or function in that public schema. You can already remove this privilege from users before Postgres 15. But Postgres 15 makes it the default where this public creation privilege is removed from a public schema. The idea is in the public schema, if I'm a database owner, I can still keep creating objects there. But if I'm an unrelated user, I need to be explicitly granted that permission. This really improves the default security and will be a systematic improvement from the mentioned vulnerabilities today. Thank you so much for listening. This was 5 Minutes of Postgres. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear about next week's episode and talk to you next week.